We will talk about computer hardware basics, what you should know as an IT professional, and troubleshooting hardware issues. For this lesson, we are only going to discuss the main components of a computer, which are the following, and their application to the IT workplace. Let's get started with the CPU. CPU is known as the brain of the computer, and every action, keystroke, and command goes through the CPU. There are three key characteristics that we should take note about the CPU. First, we have the clock speed. This is measured in gigahertz, and it determines how quickly the CPU can process instructions. The higher the clock speed of the CPU is, the quicker it can process instructions, so a faster clock speed means applications can load and run faster. Next is cores and threads. Modern CPUs often have multiple cores and threads, allowing for parallel processing. This means that a high core count means that a computer can run multiple programs and or switch between programs at the same time with little trouble. Last is cache memory. This is high-speed memory integrated into the CPU for faster access to frequently used data. It acts as a temporary storage area that the computer's processor can retrieve data from easily. In general, the higher core count and higher max frequencies, the more powerful the computer is. Okay, next. Can you name some popular brands for CPU? If you answered Intel or Ryzen, then you're correct. These are the most popular brands in the market currently. In this lesson, we're going to focus more on Intel as it's what's commonly used in the business setting. Intel have different types of processors. We are just going to focus on Intel Core because this is what is commonly used for general computing. For servers though, Intel Xeon is used for its power. Currently, the i5, i7, and i9 are what most computers have for their CPU. Understanding the generation of an Intel CPU is important because it can help you determine if it's the right processor for your needs. Later, we will compare different CPU generations. You have probably seen what looks like this on your computer. Let's just quickly discuss what it means so you can identify the CPU next time. So the most important part of this is the brand modifier and the generation indicator. This would tell you if your CPU has an older or newer generation. Alright, now we have learned a lot about CPUs, let's talk about how it applies to IT work. Understanding the role of CPU can help us optimize the performance of the computers we manage in the business and IT professionals select CPUs based on their processing power and the number of cores and threads. This influences the performance of servers, workstations, and virtualization environment. It also helps when we upgrade devices. Assessing CPU compatibility with motherboards and applications is crucial when upgrading systems. IT professionals ensure that CPUs meet performance requirements for specific tasks. For example, Adobe Premiere is used by the design department. As ID professionals, we should be able to look for computers with the appropriate CPU that can handle this application. Okay, so now let's compare different CPU generations. They are both Core i5 but 13th and 12th gen respectively. The newer generation on the left has increased clock speed, cores and threads than the other. This shows that 13th gen is more powerful than 12th gen. Okay, we're done discussing CPU, now let's move on to the random access memory. The RAM is short-term memory. It's where your data is stored that your computer processor needs to run your applications and open your files. Just like the CPU, there's key characteristics of RAM that we have to keep in mind. First is capacity. Typically measured in gigabytes, determines how much data can be stored temporarily. The higher the capacity, the more data can be stored by applications. Next is speed. This affects how quickly data can be accessed and processed. The higher the number, the faster your computer can store and retrieve the data stored in local memory. Last, RAM is volatile. It loses its data when the computer is powered off. Okay, so let's review. What kind of data does the RAM store? This would be the operating system, open documents and files, and the other programs running. 
Okay, let's move on to how IT professionals deal with RAM at work. RAM size and speed directly impact system performance. IT professionals should ensure adequate RAM for servers, workstations, and applications to prevent bottlenecks and improve responsiveness. For example, when IT needs to install an operating system, we should know what the minimum RAM is needed. Like Windows 11, the minimum amount of RAM required to install or upgrade to Windows 11 is 4 GB. Also in the workplace, there will be times that the IT will need to upgrade the RAM to handle more applications. What do you think is recommended RAM size for a computer? It will depend on what kind of computer user will it be. There's basic and professional user. Here's what's recommended for a basic user using the following applications and functionality. Before, 4 gig was enough, but because the applications we use are increasing, so does the RAM size required. For professional user, they need more RAM capacity for multitasking and heavy applications. Okay, so let's now move on to the third component, which is the storage devices. If the RAM is a short-term storage, these storage devices are for long-term data storage, which means that you won't lose the data when you power off the computer. Here are some of the different types of storage devices. Which ones are you more familiar with? The first one is the HDD, which is the oldest in this group and are sometimes called spinners in the field because they use spinning magnetic disk. These are no longer commonly used for computers as a primary disk because they are slow, but they are still used as secondary disk for storage on some computers because they are cheaper option for higher storage disk with high capacity. Next is a SATA SSD, which is commonly used in the workplace now because they are faster than the hard disk drive. And there's also a much faster drive, which is the NVMe SSD. It uses PCIe, so it's more than three times faster than SATA SSD. Now, let's talk about how we deal with hard drives at work. Understanding hard drives is important when selecting between HDD and SSD, based on speed and capacity requirements. IT professionals optimize storage configurations for computers, ensuring efficient data access and backup. Typically at work, there will be times where we need to replace a bad drive or upgrade a drive to a newer type like HDD to SSD or to NVMe. Lastly, we will discuss about the motherboard. The motherboard can be found in all computers because it serves as the backbone of connectivity. I won't be discussing motherboard in depth for this class because there's a lot to discuss. I'll only show the important components that an IT professional should know. The following are the components that we should know as IT professionals. Where the CPU is located where the RAM slots are, just in case we need to replace or upgrade the RAMs, and the expansion slots for adding additional cards like graphic cards, network adapters, and sound cards. Okay, so now let's talk about how we can apply this to our IT work. As IT professionals, we should know how to select CPUs, RAM, and expansion cards that are compatible with the motherboard to ensure compatibility to avoid hardware conflicts and optimize system performance. Now that we've talked about the main components of a computer, we can now check what hardware specs we have. Okay, so if you are using Windows, here is a quick way to see your hardware specifications. So in the search bar, you can type system information and select this system information. And it will show up a more detailed list of your hardware specifications. So as you can see in here, for example, in mine, you would see the physical memory or the RAM, which is 32 gig for me. You'll also see your processor in here or your CPU. And I have the Intel Core i7 10th generation. I can also see the model of my motherboard in here, which I have the MPG. Z490 if you're looking for that. So that's just a quick way if you want to know what your processor, your motherboard, and your RAM size is. Working with hardware doesn't just stop at computers. There's also other hardware devices that we deal with and troubleshoot and one of that is the printer. 
Printers are peripheral devices that connect to a computer or network and produces physical copies of digital documents, images, or other files. There are two types for how printers are connected at work. First is the local printer, which is directly connected to a single computer via a USB parallel or serial port. There are advantages to why we set up a printer locally. First is ease of setup. It is quick and straightforward to install. Next is control. Users have direct control over the printer without network configurations. Last is security. There's less exposure to network threats since it's not connected to a network. The next type is network printers. They are connected to a network via Ethernet or Wi-Fi. It can be accessed by multiple computers and devices within the same network. The network printer is connected to the server with print services. These are the advantages of a network printer. Accessibility. They are available to all devices on the network, promoting efficient resource sharing. Next is scalability. It's suitable for environments with multiple users and devices. Last is central management. It simplifies administration and monitoring through network tools.